You don't have to go out and buy expensive equipment to work on your stroke recovery at home. Today, I'm gonna to be going through 12 of my favorite household items that you can use for your home rehab. Before we get started, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel to help us reach more survivors around the globe. Okay, let's get into it. Item one, coffee cup. Yep, you heard me correctly. The first item on our list is a coffee cup. So what's really nice about a coffee mug is, depending on your level of grip strength, you can actually practice a smaller grip with your fingers here by holding onto the handle. You can also practice a wider grip strength by holding onto the larger part of the mug itself. So depending on kind of where you're at, you can grade this and by grade, you can challenge yourself in different ways depending on where you're starting. Now, another way that you can use a coffee mug, you can practice raising it up. Now, what this does is a few different things. You're not only getting grip strength, but you're also getting functional strengthening. This is a movement that many of us do on a daily basis if we're coffee or tea drinkers. You can make this more challenging by putting water in the mug. You know, do you fill it up to the top and try not to spill it? Do you put just a little bit in for some added resistance? Um, but that's a great way to get in some arm strengthening, some wrist movement here as you even maybe practice tipping it over. Um, but you can get a lot of different movements, a lot of different challenges by using a coffee mug in your home recovery program. Item two, toilet paper roll. Yep, a toilet paper roll. So when you're done using up all your toilet paper, don't throw the roll away. You can practice a grip and release using the toilet paper roll as you bring it over your mug, practice releasing and dropping it into the mug. Then coming back, focusing on pinch, pulling it back out, manipulating it in your hand to again get it in your grip, trying to practice not gripping it too hard so you don't crush it. Um, so you're getting some nice feedback there as well. Something else you could do with the toilet paper roll is actually some more in-hand manipulation where you try to take your fingers and roll the roll keeping it in your hand, but just practicing moving those fingers, moving that hand in a way that's not going to drop the toilet paper roll. Item three, dried beans or pasta. Yes, dried beans or pasta can be really helpful if you don't have access to dumbbells or even cuff weights. They're nice because they are moldable, so you can hold on and get a nice grip, whether it's beans, whether it's pasta, and they're gonna come in different sizes. So for example, this bag of rotini, I just got this from Walmart, is one pound. And often you can find dried beans in one pound, two pound increments, even some rice up to five pound increments, although that may be a little more difficult unless you're using both hands to help you work out. Pretty much almost everyone has some bag of dried pasta or dried beans, and if you don't, it's an incredibly cheap way to invest in your home recovery program. Item four, canned food. We're sticking on our theme of food. Canned food is great though, sort of the next step up from bagged beans or bagged uh, pasta in that you do require more grip strength for these canned foods because they're not flexible. Um, you do have to have that wide grip to be able to hang on to them, but they're wonderful tools, cheap tools, and almost everyone has at least a few cans in their pantry. So what you can do with these is use them in your strengthening routine. If you're working on strengthening up those arms, use them for bicep curls, use them for tricep extension, rows, shoulder flexion, shoulder abduction. You can do so many different things with these cans in the same way that you would maybe use dumbbells. Item five, cereal. Again, we're hanging on to the food train with cereal. What I like about cereal is it allows you to work on a lot of that fine motor coordination, that dexterity piece that often gets interrupted after a stroke. So what you can do, you can even practice having your cereal in a bag and trying to pick up one piece at a time. You can also lay these out on a surface. You can try having a couple different pieces down and working on picking up 
a few pieces at a time, one piece at a time. Ooh, trying not to drop them like I just did. You can even practice stacking them up if you want. Using cereal is a great way to work on that dexterity piece in your home rehab program. Item six, jars. What's nice about using jars is again, we're really focused on that in-hand manipulation, grip strength, and most of us have some type of jar in our cabinets. So what you would do is practice using the palm of your hand and then twisting to get that lid off. Then you're manipulating with your fingers to twist the lid of that jar until it comes off. Then you're also having to coordinate your efforts here between both of your hands so that you're getting the jar back on and you're getting it on in the right way. You're twisting to tightness and then you can even come back and use the palm of your hand to get it even tighter. Item seven, cards and puzzles. So we're moving away from just strictly upper body, arm, hand tools in cards and puzzles. If you're having trouble with memory, attention, concentration, sequencing, problem solving, planning, organizing, all of those different pieces of our cognition, playing a good card game or even working on a good puzzle can be extremely helpful to help you rebuild some of those cognitive skills. Item eight, bed sheet. A bed sheet can come into play for a lot of different things, but I particularly like it for stretching and especially for lower body stretching. So one of my favorite stretches to do with a um, bed sheet is to unroll this, get your foot propped up or your leg propped up. And we're gonna be working on a calf stretch. So what you can do is take your sheet and sort of roll it up in a way that's gonna be long enough for you to reach and hold on to the two ends. Now, if you have trouble with grip strength in your affected or involved side, it may be worthwhile having somebody else help you with this. What you're gonna do is flip that around the bottom of your foot, and then you're just gonna pull up. You want it kind of on the ball of your foot, and then you're just gonna pull back until you feel a nice stretch in your calf muscle. Item nine, towel. In the same sort of vein as using a sheet, we're gonna be using a towel, but for exercises this time. And the towel is going to help us to reduce friction as we work out. So this is good if you don't have a ton of strength yet or a ton of movement. Sometimes that friction, if you're like doing tabletop exercises, can cause that hand or that foot to stick and make it a little bit difficult for you to accomplish some of those exercises. But if you're practicing, let's say, shoulder abduction, as I'm sitting here, you might push this out to the side and then bring it back. And that towel is helping to cut back on that friction. Um, it also allows us to do what's called gravity eliminated exercises. So rather than having to fight gravity this way, especially if you don't have that movement yet, we're able to facilitate and create that similar movement, but without having to fight gravity. Item 10, PVC pipe. So I recognize that not everyone will have PVC pipe laying around, but it is a relatively cheap and an expensive way um, to get a great home rehab tool. If you need some assistance, let's say you're using both of your hands um, versus just using one, because that can be difficult, but you're working on upper body strength and you wanna be able to raise your arms up, maybe even go side to side. You may put your palms on the bottom and work on doing some bicep curls. Using a PVC pipe, umbrella, cane, uh, whatever you have available to you that is a bit longer that allows you to get both of your hands onto that surface can be extremely helpful. Item 11, potted plant. Yeah, this one might seem a little bit random, but hang with me. So a potted plant or potting plants, if you're in the process of potting plants, is a great activity, a great way to exercise upper body, cognition, all of those different things. So what's really nice, especially about a small potted plant, is you can, of course, practice your grip strength. 
You can practice some nice strengthening as well, depending on how heavy that plant is. We're gonna have to water that plant. So being able to carry a watering can, um, pouring out that water onto the plant. I think a big piece of this, a mental health piece of this, is caring for something other than yourself. Because caring for yourself can be really difficult after a stroke and it can feel exhausting. And this isn't to add something else to your plate, but to help give you a sense of accomplishment and responsibility again, where you may have lost some of those pieces. Item 12, chair or kitchen counter. I'm a huge proponent of doing exercises and activities safely at home because so many people are discharged home before they're ready, um, especially if you're in the United States, you know, with the way that our healthcare system is, people are often discharged far too early. And so making sure that you're being as safe as possible at home, but continuing on your home rehab um, is really important. So using something like a sturdy solid chair or even your kitchen counter, as you're working on some of those standing exercises, leg exercises, walking exercises is extremely important and necessary. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Leave me a comment, let me know, what are some of your favorite household items to work on your stroke recovery? And as always, I'm leaving a link down in the description if you'd like to sign up for the email list. And if you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke, please consider gifting us, either by giving us a one-time donation via PayPal, by giving us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below, or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you could access to cool perks like social media shoutouts, behind the scenes footage, and even YouTube shoutouts, of which I have some today. Thank you all so much for continuing to contribute at the Empower level. We can't do what we do without you. And of course, a huge thank you to all of our other Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.